Good morning students, welcome to the statistics class. In the previous class, I've explained to you about the consumer price index number or the cost of living index number. And uh, today, uh, we will continue that. Okay, I'll explain it to you about the definition. I have given you the definition of consumer price index number. And also I have explained to you about the uses of consumer price index number. So now today, let's learn how to construct this consumer price index number so steps in the construction of consumer price index number this is one of the important question of five marks students a very important question of five marks describe the steps in the construction of consumer price index number describe the steps in the construction of consumer price index number or explain the steps in the construction of consumer price index number so that way they may ask you so the explanation uh, is been given to you in four points and these are the four points that are written on the board here number one is defining the purpose and the scope okay number two is conducting family budget inquiry and selecting the appropriate system of weights the third one is obtaining price quotations and the fourth one is computing the index number. These are the four steps students, the four points, steps in the construction of consumer price index number has four steps. Number one is said is defining purpose and the scope. Now the purpose of this consumer price index number, okay should be very clear in the beginning so when you plan to construct a consumer price index number your purpose should be defined properly your purpose must be defined correctly your purpose must be very clear for every person to understand that what is the reason of constructing this consumer price index number so what purpose so this, the purpose is to identify uh, between one, one class of consumers between two years. In two years, how the cost of living has, uh, has increased or decreased is what to know. This is the purpose. And when you say this purpose, and you have to be very clear with what class of consumers that you are uh, looking into or you what class of consumers this index numbers will be calculated for is what you need to be very clear in the beginning the purpose has to be very clear construct a consumer price index number for all the bank employees whether it is a private bank or whether it is a public sector banks is what you need to be very clear public sector banks in Karnataka or in Maharashtra or in Tamil Nadu or in Andhra Pradesh this is how you have to explain it very clearly the purpose so the purpose of constructing the consumer price index number must be defined correctly so that defines right that gives you an opening to to you and to understand what type of data to be collected where it has to be collected also it will it will give you right that's what it says scope the scope is what it refers to the matter you are speaking about the income and expenditure this is all about consumer price index number it's all about the cost of living itself the data is very simple but the scope here specifically refers to the geographical area students it specifically refers to geographical area as i mentioned in in that purpose that construct a consumer price in index number of public sector employees of karnataka state so when i said karnataka state our scope is limited to karnataka our geographical area is limited to karnataka is that right so we are collecting the data of all the public sector bank employees of karnataka state itself students within karnataka state all the public sector bank employees is what we need to and there also can be we can be very specific again so we can think about Canara bank employees or you can say state bank employees or you can speak speak about bank of baroda employees you know like that you can be very specific also in that so your purpose has to be very clearly defined in the beginning and that is what is the first step define 
the purpose and scope so after that do, after you do that and in the purpose you speak about public sector employees after you define that this is all about public sector bank employees of karnataka state particularly of a of a, of, a, of a state bank of india or you can speak speak about canara bank or you can speak about bank of baroda if you think about bank of baroda all the employees we want to know about the cost of living of bank of baroda employees of karnataka state within karnataka state so then what happens is immediately the second step arises what is that second step second step it is all about conducting family budget inquiry so when you know these bank of baroda employees you have the list of all those employees and you can start conducting the family budget students their budget their allocations okay what is their income and what is their expenditure so when you speak about their allocations you can categorize it very specifically for food how much they give right how much they allow a lot for food or how much they allocate for food or how much they allocate for clothing how much they allocate for uh, the medicine how much they allocate for housing or how much they allocate for the medicine uh, education or the entertainment or like that you can categorize students food clothing house rent you know education then about uh, you know fuel right and all, all other services you know we can just categorize into broad headings and then we can do it so <clears throat> there when we do this such things you no know, students then you will come to know right that where that particular family or that particular uh, an employee is giving importance to what particular uh, heading whether they are giving importance to food or whether they are giving importance to clothing or whether they are giving importance to or not not only say importance the how much more, how much you know you can think about the maximum share where it goes whether it goes to food or <clears throat> whether it goes to clothing or whether it goes to the housing or whether it goes to the medicine is what you can identify so that is what we can call it is automatically in the second step itself the selecting the weights come what does it mean if some families give importance or they give maximum share for food then food is a topmost priority the weight or the ranking is number 1 for that family some families they say they give importance to housing my house should look good right it should have well equipped well furnished it should be well furnished nice nicely decorated interior decoration must be very nice so i would like to spend more on that housing more on how my house so that means they give importance to house there we can say house rent or housing is number 1 some will be giving importance to clothing you know i want to wear all branded clothes all whatever it is i have to have all branded okay so when we think about all that then definitely they are giving importance to the clothing rather than food or housing so clothing will be number 1 so like that you will come to know according to their allocations according according to their shares what is their preference so based on that we can assign weights or we can assign the ranks and that is what is the second step which is called as conducting family budget inquiry and selecting the weights after that we go for the third one that is obtaining price quotation stones so once you know that this family right this family does shopping grocery shopping in one particular shop this is a shop and another family in the same locality do do the sh same grocery shopping in another shop you know there are various shops various retail outlets so one family goes to xyz retail another one goes to abc retail another one goes to pqr retail so like the different you know families have their own right shops like that to go and visit and buy so you know somewhere these shops have some differences in the products some small minor differences will be there but difference of prices i'm speaking different of prices of the commodities some will say around 36.50 paisa per kg but another one will say 36 rupees or maybe some other come uh, sale would be say 37 rupees so like that you no know, there will be some changes some variations in the prices now which price is right which price is right the same brand same brand of product right it may be sold in one particular shop uh, with uh, 50 paisa extra it may be sold in 1 rupee extra 
or it may be you know less than 50 paisa also so like that they may you know there will be variations like that so which price is right so for that sake what we need to do is we need to take into consideration all the prices of all the shops the varieties of shops who where the consumer visits okay he the consumer goes to that shop and the other consumer goes to the other shop and the other consumer goes to the other shop so like that go to all these shops where where you are consumers where you are uh, people who give the data to you, visit so those people uh, from their shops you go and collect the data and take the average of those three uh, prices okay say for example x y one particular product as i said it will be 37 rupees another another shop the same product they say quoted as 38 rupees another uh, shop same product quotes 37.5 rupees so what you should do is you have to take the average of these three and that would be called for us as the price of that particular commodity so likewise see all those commodities take the list of all those commodities and go to the shops and take the price quotations of it this is how obtaining price quotations are done the next <clears throat> last one is the computing an index number now once we get the data students once we have the data once we do all this we have to look into which formula should be used so there are two formulas that we will that we'll be using students there are only two formulas the two formulae that we'll be using for construction of consumer price index number number one is called our two formulas or two methods we call it as and number one is called as aggregative expenditure method aggregative expenditure method expenditure method okay this is one aggregative expenditure method now what is this aggregative expenditure method formula it is given by this formula p01 is equal to is equal to summation p1 q0 divided by summation p0 q0 into 100 it looks similar is it right yes it looks some, somewhat similar so it is same as last year's index number okay it is same as last year's index number so aggregative expenditure method is p01 summation p1 q0 divided by summation p0 q0 into 100 so for this formula to apply we require three values we require p1 we require p0 we require q0 p1 p0 and q0 these three values are required based on that we can calculate this aggregative expenditure method the second one is called as family budget method family budget method students family budget method okay we call this to be as fb fbm not facebook it's family budget okay so what it is it is given as p01 is equal to p01 is equal to summation wp divided by summation w okay summation uh, it is given as p01 is equal to summation wp divided by summation w so summation w what is it it, it also is is the same as it is same as weighted arithmetic mean index number it is same as weighted arithmetic mean index number okay so these are the two formulae that we have it for consumer price index number so to calculate the uh, consumer price index number for, for family budget method what is a, what are the things that we require we require p what is p p is equal to p1 upon p0 into 100 p is equal to p1 upon p0 into 100 w is the weights so if we have these p1 p0 w if we have then the remaining all can be calculated and uh, we can find out this uh, uh, consumer price index number using family budget method students this is how we do it okay i hope you have understood this so there are four steps in the construction of consumer price index numbers number one is defining the purpose and the scope number two is conducting family budget inquiry and assigning a proper system of weights number three is obtaining price quotations and number four is computing an index number 
So in computation of index number, two methods are applied. Number one is aggregative expenditure method and number two is family budget method. Okay, so I hope you have understood this students. In the next class, we will solve some problems based on these uh, two methods students. Okay, thank you very much.